thing I'm going to note is that this jet pump is installed incorrectly. In order for a jet pump system to work effectively, this pump has to be at the highest point in the suction line. You can see if we follow this suction line back, we follow it back here, it goes up and into the cistern right here. That jet pump is, on, is actually at the lowest point of the suction side of the, of the plumbing. That's going to cause some problems. So you won't be able to prime the pump like you need to in order to get it to work efficiently and effectively. The reason that we want it at the highest point is that we want to be able to open up the priming port on the pump, pour water in, and have all that water flow into that suction line, ultimately down inside the cistern to a check valve, also known as a foot valve, in the, in the, in the cistern itself. So with this setup, everything's flowing toward the pump, there's no effective way to prime the pump. And we, we can see that uh, because if we, if we opened up this priming port, this is exactly what that is, it's a priming port, and we tried to pour water in, that water would never fill that suction line. So with this particular installation, they are relying on a siphon to occur in order for this pump to work, which it may, it may produce a siphon. In fact, it probably will, but it's just not what we want to see in an installation of a jet pump. If we look closer, we'll see that they have a check valve here. This is preventing flow, uh, the flow of water from going back into that suction line. And of course, they absolutely need a check valve here because, again, if they prime the, the pump, they can never prime that whole suction line. They can never fill that with water. So they have to put a check valve here instead of in the, at the base of the, of the suction end of the, of the plumbing inside the cistern where it should be. So this is, this is not a good uh, setup. Other reason if it, that this doesn't work well is that if we look carefully, we see the cast iron pump touching a galvanized nipple, touching a brass check valve, touching a galvanized nipple, touching copper. That is not a good way to plumb a system. You do not want magnetic metals such as galvanized touching non-magnetic metals such as brass or copper. Brass to cast iron, okay. Copper to brass, okay. Stainless, if these were stainless steel, that would be just fine. Stainless steel is non-magnetic. But the fact that they have galvanized touching brass, you can already see that there's evidence of corrosion there and this could eventually break. And of course, with this particular installation, because they're relying on a siphon, if this plumbing breaks right here, that whole tank is gonna siphon out into the floor of this basement. That's exactly why we don't wanna see this pump at the bottom of an install. Now, the other thing that I'm gonna note is that their suction line for some reason has a branch coming off of it. This is an absolute no-no, especially since with the check valve there, this, this pump in a normal operating configuration, if you have a check valve in the cistern, this whole su suction line gets pressurized. In this particular application, this check valve prevents this whole suction line from ever reaching pressure, ever reaching operating pressure. So to have a branch right here makes no sense because this is not going to be a pressurized feed to anything. And furthermore, it's going to detract from the ability to effectively prime this, this uh, suction line or to rely on a siphon. Because if this is open and that's open to air, that's going to break the siphon and that pump's never going to, never going to develop pressure, never going to prime properly. So it's really not a good setup. We generally try to steer people away from jet pumps for a few different reasons. One, they're very easy, as you saw, to install improperly. And if even the slightest variation occurs in the installation, this jet pump will not work as it should. It could constantly lose prime. If you get any air bubble in that suction line, you're gonna have to reprime this thing. They're difficult to work with. They're not user friendly. Yes, it does have the advantage of being located outside of the cistern, which makes it easier to replace if it ever goes bad. But we're talking about pumps that last 10, 15, 20 years without needing replacement. 
you know, it's, it's silly to just put a pump in here for that one time every 15, 20 years where you're gonna have to replace it. It doesn't make much functional sense, especially when there are advantages to using a submersible pump. In addition to being difficult to prime, jet pumps are also kind of loud. Uh, in this particular application, in a basement, every time you run water, this pump motor kicks on um, once the pressure tank is drained, and you're gonna hear that motor cycling multiple times a day. And we hear customers all the time saying, you know, this pump is driving me crazy. We go up, you know, my spouse gets up in the night to go to the bathroom, flushes the toilet, and this pump wakes everyone up. No, they're not extremely loud, but you can definitely hear them running. It sounds kind of like a, a loud sump pump that's, that's cycling constantly through the day. Also, they're, they're not uh, um, electrically efficient as a, as a submersible pump is. You can, if you look at pump curves, you can see that a half horsepower submersible pump operates at almost identical pump curves to a three quarter horsepower jet pump. Uh, that, that submersible pump is just pushing water. This jet pump is drawing water in and then pressurizing it out. So they really don't make a whole lot of sense. So we are going to uh, cut open this plumbing here. We're gonna install a, a submersible pump inside the cistern. They'll never have to worry about priming it. We're gonna make it so that they can remove the pump easily if it ever needs to be replaced and uh, we're just gonna improve the overall cistern performance.